name is Olivia Green, and I'm from Magnolia, Arkansas. I was born October the 2nd, 1939. I worked at Peace 26 years. My childhood in Magnolia was normal. My mom and dad were teachers, so we had to do extra than some of the other children because we were students, children of teachers. So it was a lot of fun and then sometimes it wasn't. When your parents are teachers, everyone in the community look up to teachers at that time. Naturally, your parents always told you how you're supposed to act. No matter whatever you do, remember we are teachers in the community and people are going to look up to us. So you are to always be at your best at all times. I had two sisters and one brother, and I'm the youngest. When I was young, my parents always tried to instill in us to learn all that we could because we were going to be a teacher. And I said, I don't want to be a teacher. I want to be a dancer. But my teachers, whenever we were in class, they would always call on me because they knew I was going to college. If she called row one and I was in row five to go to the board to diagram a sentence, she would always say, Olivia, go to the board. I said, I'm not in row one. She said, you are now. So I think they picked on us <laughs> because they wanted us to be good at the learning process. Since I was the youngest student, youngest in my family, I think parents have a tendency to forget the youngest one like the first child, they take all the pictures of that first baby. The sec second, third, sometimes they forget that last kid. So they always said, well, my sisters those always told me that they were smarter than me. So I had always tried harder to keep my grades up than they did. My junior high and high school years were fun. That's when we were trying to court, have little boyfriends. I met my husband in high school. He went to Walker and I went to Columbia. So he would come by my house every day. And I would make sure I'd be outside playing hopscotch. And he would talk, I would talk. And that night, he would call me on the telephone. The next day at school, all the girls were telling me, did Eddie Green call you last night? And I said, oh, he called you too? So that didn't go on. That wasn't too good. So I explained to him that, you know, you can't go with everybody in this class. You got to make a choice. So he didn't make the choice. So we both went off to college. And he went in military. And we met up after college. to college at Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Agricultural, Mechanical, and Norman College. Today it's called University. But it was a little rough for me because my brother was in college up there at the same time. It was always <laughs> like he was my daddy. My first year in college, I was a cheerleader. And the way we got on the cheerleading team because she had to always try out and my girlfriend Josephine I said you know we're not gonna make it 
She says, we are. Turned out her sister was picking the cheerleaders. That's how we end up being on a cheerleading squad. <laughs> and we had to turn flips, you know. We didn't know that much about football. So when they hollered, go team, go, we didn't know what was going on. <laughs> and we got ready to turn flips. My shorts split. And I said, well, what am I going to do now? And Josephine said, don't turn any more flips. <laughs> I graduated from college in uh, 1961. And after I graduated, I didn't know what I was going to do. Because a lot of children went to college to find a husband, but no one told me that. I didn't know I was supposed to be up there trying to find a husband. So I ended up going back to Magnolia, Arkansas to teach. And I taught in a small school, country school, in a rural area, all black. So at that time, you had three or four classes, grades in the same class, because like I said, it was a country school. And you had to teach first, second, and third at the same time. So you had to allot your time wisely, maybe give one group something to do and teach another group and vice versa. So it was a learning experience. Well, after that year in Magnolia, Eddie came back to town. And we kept getting thrown together with these other couples. And finally, he asked me to marry him. And I said, yes. Maybe I married him to get away from Magnolia. I also married him because I loved him. I loved the way he treated me. Because Daddy says, always marry someone that respects you. And especially when you was going with someone too, they first have to respect you. Treat you like a lady. Never let a man hit you. And he told Eddie that. We've already raised her once. If you don't want to, bring her home. We love her. That's how that ended. It had decided to go back in service. And we went to his first tour. It was Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. When I first went to Fort Chaffee, I didn't work because Eddie told me I didn't have to work when I married him. So. I took him up on that. So right after that, I got pregnant. We transferred from Fort Chaffee to Lawton, Oklahoma. And Bernard was born in uh, April the 7th, 1963. We stayed in Lawton, Oklahoma maybe six or seven months. Then he got shipped to Germany. We stayed there long enough for me to have another baby. <laughs> I had another baby in Germany. Jeffrey was born March the 18th, 1965. The best part of being a mother is you get to love somebody and you get, they get to love you. You get all the hugs and the kisses. <laughs> and you get to rub the little leg when they fall. Love. That's what's so good about children. We were in Ken Fort Campbell, Kentucky when my husband passed. And he had a heart attack. At 26. We were both 26. So I became a widow at 26. He was working with, he was a drill sergeant in the Army. 
And at that time, you had to try to train the recruits. So you was up late, up early. So he wasn't getting his rest. And he had a heart attack. I came to Austin, Texas in 1967. My mom and dad wanted me to come where I had family so they could help take care of me and help with the boys. So my brother and his wife lived here. We were young, 26, 27. And uh, that's when I started doing substitute teaching. When I started substituting, I met uh, Mr. Rice at Blackshear Elementary School. And he took me on his wing. He liked me. And he told me, um, always show up when they called me to substitute. That way I could get on in Austin. So they he told me to go in and put in my application down at the administration building. And they called me and told me to come in. They want to interview me. So when I went in, the person that interviewed me, he said that uh, Miss Hunter at Pease Elementary School wanted a black teacher. And I told him, I didn't want to go to Pease. I wanted to stay on the east side of town. So he said, Miss Hunter wants a black teacher. She never asked for a black teacher before. I said, I don't want to be the black teacher. He said, if you don't take the job, you won't get in on in Austin. I said, is that a threat? He said, if you don't take it, you won't get on in Austin. So I had to go to Miss Hunter's house to be interviewed. And that was unusual. Usually you interview at a school. And she lived on Enfield Road. I didn't know where Enfield Road was because I'm from Arkansas. So I found a house and naturally I was late. I left early enough to find it, but I got lost. So when I did get to her house, she opened the door. She looked at me, started at my feet, went up to my head. I looked at her head, went down to her feet. So she says, uh, Olivia? I said, yes. Miss Hunter? She said, yes. She said, you late? I said, I know. I got lost. Please forgive me. She said, come on in. So I went in, and she offered me a seat. She had antiques everywhere. So I was used to antiques, even though we didn't have any in the house. But I looked around, and I said, hmm. So she started asking me questions about where I was from, and I gave her good answers, because I knew those answers. And then she asked me if I thought George Wallace was prejudiced. I said, now you know he's prejudiced. She says, Olivia, I like you. I said, someone else would have told me differently, but you were honest, so if you want the job, you have it. You can have it. I said, well, what if I don't want it? She said, you got the job, Olivia. And that's how I ended up at Pease Elementary School. The reason I didn't want to go to Pease, because I know me. I do have a little temper, and I didn't want anyone to hurt me. Even though Miss Hunter said, well, nothing going to happen to me. She's going to take care of me. I was still a little leery. But I knew I could take care of myself. So the first day I went, I, the janitor, he was black, Salem Robertson. And he asked the question. I said, I'm the new teacher. He said, no, you're not. I say, yes, I am. 
I said, I know what I'm doing. I can handle it. He said, okay. So when I was introduced to the teachers, you know, everybody was looking at me funny. And I looked at them funny. And she introduced me, and I said, hi, hi, I'm Olivia. Everybody said hi. So after that, you know, when I would meet them in the hall, they would give me that little look and smile, trying to smile, but it wasn't really a smile. So I told one of the ladies, tell them they don't have to speak if they don't want to, because I don't want to speak either. She said, what? I said, just tell them what I said. So after that, some spoke and some didn't which was good. They knew where I was coming from. So um, when we had faculty meetings and you know how you have those meetings and they ask questions about how is the race relationship, they said, oh, we can ask Olivia, how are we treating you? I said, you know how you're treating me. You don't need to ask me that. I said, uh, it's not too good. I said, but that's fine. I've already been hurt once when my husband passed. You can't hurt me. Even though I was young, I still stuck to what I was saying because I knew that's the only way I was going to get along with those ladies, stand my ground. So um, the teacher, the principal, they were afraid of her, Miss Hunter. But I wasn't, because she said she's going to take care of me, so I wasn't worried about it. So well, they sent us out for a workshop. Naturally, I didn't know where I was going. I got lost again. When I got there, the teacher was trying to ask everyone their name and tell what school they went to. So I tried to give my name three times, and she wouldn't listen to me. So my coworker that was at the workshop, she said, Olivia is trying to tell you her name. So the lady said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. What is your name? I said, Olivia Green, and I'm from Pease Elementary School. So she said, okay. So that next day at school, I didn't go to school the next day. I called in sick. So I called Miss Hunter during the day, and I told her I wanted to see her. I wanted to have a conference with her after school. So my coworker saw me. She said, girl, you really have your nerves. I said, hey, I'm not going to let nobody run over me. So Ms. Hunter asked me, said, were you sick today? I said, no. She said, what happened? I said, I'm, the lady didn't treat me right at the workshop, and I'm not going back. She said, well, what happened? You think she did that because you were black? I said, I don't care if she thought I was green or purple. I'm not going back. She said, well, if I talk to the lady, will you go back? She picked up the phone and called somebody. She said, it won't happen again. So the next time I went to the workshop, the lady treated me like I was her pet, wanted me to pass out all the papers and things. So I went back to Miss Hunter. I said, I'm not going back. She said, why? I said, I don't want to be a pet. She said, well, what do you want, Olivia? I said, I want to be treated just like everyone else. After that, well, I still had a couple of problems with some of the teachers, but Everybody understood then that I'm not going to take anything. So I went in the cafeteria one day to get some water. So when I went outside with my water, I haven't told too many people this, and um, the lady put a hand in my glass. And I looked at her. I didn't throw the water on her because I knew if I had, 
I was probably going to be fired or Miss Hunter was going to fire her or somebody, so I didn't say anything. I went back and got some more water, and I came back, and I told her, I said, now, do you want some water? Because if you put your hand in it this time, you're going to get the water. She said, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. I guess the other lady had told her how wrong she was. So I didn't tell Miss Hunter, but I knew then that was a turning point for that lady because I believe I was going to have to do something to prove the point. And after that, I didn't have any more problem with the ladies. I don't know if the word got around. They realized then that I was there to do the same thing they were there, to teach the children, nothing else. My first day at Pease it was a little different because the children probably hadn't had a black teacher before. And I had never had any white students either. So it was a little awkward. After the children got used to me, I always gave them a hug at the end of the day. And then they got used to that. And some of the kids said that they liked the hugs because some of them did get hugs at home. And then I got to be known as the hugging lady, but they enjoyed it. First thing I did, I set the groundwork. I explained to them what I expected from them. I didn't want anything less. I worked at Peace 26 years. Now, normally, the teachers transfer to get away from the principals. But I taught under five principals, so maybe they were trying to get away from me. <laughs> I always said that in this room, you're going to learn. We would play games, laugh, tell jokes. Then I said, okay, it's time to get back to work. So they expected that. And the parents knew that the kids were going to learn something. And if the parents worked with me, they would learn something. And I always said, you're going to be better, especially the black kids. you got to be better. And you're going to be better before you leave here, this room. And... All the kids knew that they had to learn. Otherwise, I was going to flunk them. You got to do good to make it in this world. And that's all I was trying to instill in those kids. I really wasn't thinking about the impact that I was making when I went to peace. Until now, I said, you know, I was the first black at peace. I taught at peace 26 years. I had five principles. That's something to be proud of. And I taught all those different families that's what made me think about it. Hey, I, I did something great. I instill in those children learning process. Future generation, the advice I would give them is to try to love yourself first. Some kids don't love themselves. This is why they're having a problem. They don't like their parents, they don't like nobody. They talk back to the parents. You have to respect yourself first before you can respect anybody else. I would like to be remembered as touching someone's life along the way. 
I would like to be remembered that I love someone along the way. I made someone happy. I like to be remembered that I gave somebody a hug that didn't get a hug that day. I would also like to be remembered that I gave someone a kiss along the way.